QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Tax line mapping, enter accounts, tax mapping, and data. Let's get into it with Intuit. QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are on the desktop. We have the QuickBooks program on the left. We have the tax software to the right, that being the Lacert tax software. And then we have the QBW file that we set up last time, which is basically a blank file, nothing in it for the S corporation. Now we're going to be adding data to it and adding the tax mapping as we go. So we're going to be opening up the QuickBooks program can be done by either double clicking the QuickBooks program or double clicking on the QBW file. The QuickBooks program will look like this. So I'm going to open up the program. Here we are in our S Corp uh, test file. We're then going to take a look at the chart of accounts by going to the lists drop down. Take a look at the chart of accounts. So we have our chart of accounts. Not a whole lot of activity here. We're going to be adding new accounts as we go. As we do so, we're going to be checking out and adding the mapping uh, to those accounts. So we're going to be entering the chart of accounts, which will look something like this. We're going to be pulling the chart of accounts and entering the data for this first column the unadjusted trial balance. I'm just going to basically hide the columns over here. I'm going to go ahead and hide those items and we'll just enter this data in there. And as we do, we'll think about each of the accounts that will be included uh, in QuickBooks when we go forward. So I'm going to go back on over. Then as we enter the accounts also, if we go into Lacert, just note that it might be useful to take a look at a form 1120S and you can find one on, on the IRS website if you choose to. You don't need the, the tax program to practice this part of it. In other words, you can just look at the 1120S on the IRS website at irs.gov and then think about, well, where would this line item fall on the tax return as we start to data input it into the system? Most of the items will be on the income statement that we're considering that will be affecting the tax, which will be revenue and expenses. And then the balance sheet, which will be uh, down here on page four. Page four, we have the balance sheet, and that's going to be the Schedule L items down here for balance sheet assets and liabilities. We'll just input the beginning balances here, and I'm going to make these green as we go. So I'm going to start off on, on, the, on the last green one that we're working on, and that's going to be here, the cash account. So let's go back on over, and I'll just enter and start a cash account. We don't have cash here, so I'm just going to say new account. Let's set up a new one, and this is going to be a bank account. And so that's not the mapping. That's going to be where it goes on, uh, on, the, on the file within the financial statements balance sheet. And so we're going to say this is the checking account. Let's just call it checking. And then it's not a sub account. So that's what we look and what we're concentrating in on down here is the tax mapping line, which it did for us. So it, it actually thought, hey, you know, it's a cash account. Obviously, it's going to go to the balance sheet for cash. This is different than what we saw on the Schedule C for a sole proprietorship because there are no balance sheet accounts typically there. So we're, there was no tax mapping line for a Schedule C. Whereas if it's a corporation of some kind or another separate legal entity where you need a balance sheet, then it should be mapped out balance sheet items. So that looks good. I'm going to enter the opening balance here and I'm going to say the opening balance is uh, 110. So 110000. I'm going to put this in as of 2019, even though we're in 2021 software because the LACERT program I have currently is 2019. So I'm going to put it in as the beginning of 2019, 010119. There we have it. So I'll add that. Uh, if we think we save and I'll say save and new. And so, okay. And then if I look at the balance sheet by going to the reports drop down, company and financial. And we take a look. Well, let's look at the, the trial balance. We'll just see this thing be built as we go. Trial balance is basically the balance sheet on top of the, the income statement in one form. 010119, There's what we have so far. Notice it put the other side to opening balance equity. That's what QuickBooks basically does, right? It just puts the other side to opening balance equity when we enter these accounts uh, in opening balance. Let's go back to another new account. So the next one we want to be working with is going to be the accounts receivable. This one's a little bit tricky because we have to generally assign it to a customer in order to input it. So I'm going to go, all right, accounts receivable. Uh, let's say that we need a new one drop down up top. It's going to be an accounts receivable account. And I'm just going to call it accounts receivable. And then it's going to be mapped out to the accounts receivable. It looks like it did the mapping for us. So that's pretty straightforward. It's on the balance sheet. We're going to save. And then uh, data, data that is affected. I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to go back to the chart of accounts. And let's edit this. I'm going to edit this. I didn't put an opening balance. So I'm going to edit the account. 
And then notice it doesn't have the option for the opening balance here. Uh, or maybe I, maybe I lost it now that I entered the, the data. So let's enter a transaction into the accounts receivable to, to do so. We could do it with a journal entry or we can do it with like an invoice form. It'll typically make an invoice no matter what we do. Let's do it with a journal entry. I'm going to go to the company drop down and I'm going to set up a make journal entry. And put in the date as of 010119 and debiting or increasing with a debit accounts receivable for the opening balance, which I'm going to say is 100 or 230,000 to 30,000. And the thing that's tricky with accounts receivable is I need a customer. So I'm just going to say customer one and set that up. And this one then is going to be a customer and okay. The other side is going to go to some type of equity. We'll consistently keep with this opening balance equity, even though that's not like a real account, but that's where all the opening balances typically will go. And then we can adjust it if we so choose. So save and close. All right, so there is that one. I'm just going to continue on with this. Now we're on <clears throat> the allowance account. So allowance for doubtful accounts. Going back on over, I'm going to say account rise up, new account. And then this one is typically an accounts receivable account as well because you want it grouped right next to the AR account. So I'll say accounts receivable. And this one needs to be an allowance. So it's going to be allowance for... So allowance for doubtful accounts. And then in the tax mapping down here, I put it, to, it's going to accounts receivable because we set it up as an accounts receivable type of account. But I want to put it into the allowance for bad debt item here. So I'm going to put it there. There's no opening balance because typically I need a customer, even though I'm just going to assign basically an allowance customer to it. So I'm just going to say save and close. And then we'll have to do our same journal entry kind of technique. Well, we'll go to the company drop down and we're going to say we want to make then a journal entry make a journal entry and the allowance is a, it goes up with a credit so i'm going to say this is the allowance i'm going to make a credit for the amount in the allowance which we said was 30,000 so 30 30,000 and if you if the debits and credits are confusing we'll see them as we start to look at the balance sheet so it'll kind of play itself out the other side is, is going to go i'm going to keep going to opening balance equity as is our custom we will then need a name up top and this is i'm just going to call it the allowance customer so that we can just assign that customer when we record an allowance type transaction i'm going to say quick add customer okay and then save and close and there is that so if i go back to the balance sheet in the open windows and update it so there's what we have now we got the accounts receivable the allowance should be opposite to it because those are kind of contra asset type of accounts everything else is washing out to the opening balance equity Back to the chart of accounts. Next one that we're going to be setting up is the inventory. Now, I'm not going to turn on inventory. I'm just going to record inventory. So we're not going to be tracking inventory in the QuickBooks system. So so I'm not, in other words, I'm not going to be using like a flow method, like well, average weighted average method. I'm just going to be pretending we're doing a periodic inventory system. Okay, so I'm going to select the accounting. We're going to set up a new item. And then I'm going to say that this one should be an other current asset type of account. So I'm going to say other current asset and say continue. And I'm going to call it inventory, inventory. Now I don't, I don't need any special kind of thing happening here because again, I'm not tracking the inventory. I'm just recording uh, inventory uh, in a periodic method. So I'm going to say this is going into other current assets i would like it to be going to an inventory account so i'm going to check if there's if there's a line item specific for inventory i don't see one here so i'm going to keep it at other current assets so we'll say other current assets on the balance sheet so I'll save on that one and so let me let me edit it again if i edit that account then i'm i'd like to enter an opening balance so this one i can i can enter an opening balance there's no other sub ledger because again we're not tracking it in the system so i'm going to just enter the opening balance of 50,000 we'll say 50,000 as of 011 uh 01 uh 0130 let's say yeah 010119 and then i'm going to say okay and then save and close and yes so the chart of the trial balance then has inventory now at the 50. So that looks good so far. So we've got that. Let's go ahead and say that. And then I'm going to make this green. And then we have the bonds of 42. That's going to be an investment. So I'm going to go back to the chart of accounts. And we're going to say that we have another one. And I'm going to say a new 
item new account. I'm going to say it's an other current asset type of account and continue. And we called it just bonds. So I'm going to say it's a bonds. And down here, it's going into other current asset. That looks good. I'm going to enter the opening balance, which is going to be for the 40. This one's for the 42,000. So we'll say 42,000 as of 010119 and OK. So let's save that one and say OK. Go back to the trial balance. Then we have the bonds there uh, at the 42. So it might be a little out of order because uh, it's doing alphabetical order within... So these would be in reverse order and alphabetical order. So then we have investments, so general investments other than the bonds, apparently. So let's go to the chart of accounts. We're going to say new rise up, new account. And this one's going to be an other current asset account. And we're going to call this investments, investments. So there we have that. I'm going to add, and so it's going to the balance sheet account. That looks good. Let's add another item. This is going to be for 75,000 opening balance, 75,000, 01, 01, 19, and OK. Save and close. Yes. Back to the trial balance. And there we have now the 75,000 investments. That looks good. Continuing on, we have the property plants and equipment. I'm not going to enter like items and whatnot for the property plants and equipment. I'm just going to enter a journal entry. So we'll go to the home or back to the chart of accounts. Account rise up new. And I'm just going to enter this as one lump sum into the property plant and equipment into the fixed assets. So I'm going to say continue fixed asset type of account. And we just called it here property plant and equipment. Is that what we called it? Yeah. Property, property plant and equipment. Now this one's a little bit tricky. It's going to the, the balance sheet account here for building depreciation uh, there's also depletion accumulated depreciation land intangible accumulated depreciation the reason this one's a little bit tricky is because you're going to have to also check that in the accounting software in other words we're going to have a list of all the items in the accounting software that needs to line up with a depreciation table to this line item on the balance sheet so it'll be interesting to see you know how that line how that transports over because it, you don't want it to just overwrite what's in the system, in the tax system that needs to tie out to the, to the table. So that one's one we got to keep an eye on. That's going to be for the 100,000. 100,000 on 01, 01, and we'll say 19 and OK. Let's save and close that one and say yes. If we go back to the chart of accounts and check it out, we see that now we have the 100,000 there. That looks good. So I'm going to say that has been now populated. Let's add the accumulated depreciation. So we're going to go back to the chart of accounts. We're going to say rise up, new account. And this is going to be fixed asset as well. We're going to say continue. And this is going to be, a, I'll just call it ACCD pre for accumulated depreciation. More likely that I will not misspell it that way. And then I'm going to say accumulated depreciation, which I'm going to put down here. Now I'm in kind of like the building category. Uh, we could put it, you know, depletable assets, land, intang intangible, uh, into another kind of category of the fixed assets. But it says building slash other. We'll keep it there. So I'm going to say this is going to be the accumulated depreciation. Save and close. So make sure you change it to accumulated depreciation. And then I have to enter the beginning balance. So I'm going to edit it again. And then opening balance. And this is going to be as of 01... Uh, let's put the amount first. Now, this is kind of confusing because it's an asset, but it's a contra asset account. I think QuickBooks wants it in there as a negative. So if you put it in there in the wrong direction, you can change the direction. I think it wants a negative 19,592. So negative 19,592 as of 010119. Okay, we'll save and close that and see if it went the right way. Trial balance, check it out. And yeah, it's on the credit side. So it wanted a negative there. Even though that's weird because it's really going up in the in the credit direction because it's a con whatever. And back to the chart of accounts, we're going to then go to the prepaid assets. So I'm going to say that one's done. I'll highlight it. Prepaid assets. So I'm going to go back, back on over. Accounts rise up. New. And this is going to be a drop down other current asset accounts. So we're going to continue. And this is going to be prepaid assets. I'm going to say prepaid assets and that's going to be mapped to the balance sheet 
Other current assets looks good. Opening balance that we're going to be setting up will be then for 23,000. 23,000 as of 010119 and okay. Let's say save and close on that one. Check it out. Back to the trial balance. We're going to say, what does that look like? We have the 100,000 property plants and equipment. And then the one we just added is prepaid assets at the 23. There it is. So it's up top right there. 23,000. And our chart of accounts is a little out of order. You'd think the prepaid assets would be above the property plants and equipment. So uh, we'll keep it there. Anyways, we got the accounts payable. Let's go ahead and make that green. Accounts payable, liability side of things now. Still on the balance sheet, however. So we're going to say accounts, new account. This is going to be a liability or an accounts payable type of account. So we'll say continue. And uh, I'm just going to call it accounts payable. And then it's going to the proper account there. That looks good. We have no opening balance because I need to assign a vendor. So they won't let me do the opening balance thing. So I got to do a journal entry. So I'm going to say save and close. Company drop down, make a journal entry as of uh, 010119. It's going to be a credit to accounts payable. So I'm going to say accounts payable. Um, well, that's accumulated depreciation. Accounts payable on the credit side of things is going to be 70,000, 70,000, 70,000. And then the debit, I'm just going to put the opening balance equity as is our custom right now. I'm going to say save and close. Okay. Okay. And I need a vendor. <laughs> so vendor one. Vendor one. And there we have it. Okay. Save it and close it. And okay. Now let's check it out. Trial balance. And there we have accounts payable. Looks good. Continuing on, we got the accrued liabilities next. Accrued liabilities. So we're going to say chart of accounts. Rise up, new account. And we're going to say this is an other current liability this time. And continue. And this is going to be called accrued liabilities. Accrued liabilities. Liability. You're so accrued. Accrued, so uh, liabilities. And then we're going to have the opening balance. Hopefully I spelled that right. I possibly did not, and I apologize if I didn't. 7,000, 01, 01, 19, and say OK. Save and close. Back to the trial balance. Check that one out. Check it out. So there's the accrued liabilities. Looks good. And we're going to say then we have long-term debt. So it's going to be a long-term liability. So chart of accounts. Rise up, and we're going to say this is going to be a long term liability and continue. And this is going to be what did I call it? I called it uh, long term debt, long term debt, and it's going to go into uh, liability mortgage notes uh, long term. I think that's good, so picked a good spot. So let's go ahead and enter the opening balance which is 16,000, 16,000 as of 010119 and okay. Save it and close it, please. Save it and close it. Trial balance, what did it do? Does it did what we think it should do? Looks good. Let's go back on over and greenify it. Greenified means it's been completed. Next one, we have the capital stock because it's a corporation. So we got this capital stock. So I'm going to go back on over. Do we have a capital stock? They might have given us that as one of like the normal. Yeah, we do. They gave us that one as one of the few starting balances. Let's see if I can enter an opening balance in it. Let's edit. And they do have an opening balance section. It doesn't have a mapping right now to the tax mapping. And that's weird because it's the first account. So you'd think they would give it. But the maybe it has to roll forward so they don't have a tax mapping account. So we'll keep it as is. You would think it would be a balance sheet account if they would have it. Something to the equity side of things. So liabilities paid in capital. You would think it would be going to this capital stock. It wasn't mapped there. So I'm going to map it to the capital stock. That's where I would think it would go. And then I'm going to go to enter. And we want this to be for 100,000 opening balance. So 100,000, 01, 01, 19, and okay. 
Save it and close it, please. Save it and close it. Trial balance, checking it out. And we've got then the 100,000 there. That looks good. I'm going to greenify just the number this time so I don't unblueify the other side. Then retained earnings. Now, I'm going to go back and into the retained earnings basically at the end because everything's going to roll into the um, opening balance equity at this point in time. So uh, I'll, I'll keep it there at this point. And then we'll, we'll go back to the retained earnings. So then we have the sales. So let's go down to the sales. So I'm going to say sales. And uh, did they give us a sales line? They may have done. They may have given us that one too. Chart of accounts is what I'm looking for. Sales. No, we have no sales. No. So let's rise up and have a new sales line. That's going to be uh, a sales item. So sales is income. Income type of account. And this is we're just going to call it sales. And then it needs to be mapped out. So it didn't give us the mapping on this one. This is going to be some type of income. So it's going to be gross receipts or sales. Now we're on the income statement side of things. Top line of the income statement, sales. So I'm going to say there it is. They won't let me enter a beginning balance here. Typically, this is going to be the case because the income statement side is a temporary account. It's not a balance sheet which has a beginning balance. So it's an activity type of account. So they're not allowing me to enter uh, the beginning balance. So I'm just going to save it and close it now i could go into a journal entry each time but how about i go in and i'm going to add all the accounts first and then i'll enter the journal entry so i'll make this one like yellow because it's like half done but it's not totally done until we enter the number so then we're going to go to the returns and allowances so i'm just going to add that account by going to the accounts drop down rise up new account this is also an income account because it's a contra income account and i'm going to say next or continue and then my computer's going to freeze but then it worked again um so then i'm going to go here and say that this is going to be returns and allowances and this one i'm going to map it to an income account this time to returns and allowances so returns and allowances we can't add the beginning balance here so i'm going to say save and close well, i should be saying save and new i'm going to start saying save and new now we'll yellowify this one so we'll right click and yellowify it and now we're on the cost of goods sold. So we're going to say rise up, new. And this is going to be the drop down to the cost of the goods that are sold. Continue. And we want this just simply to be called cost of goods sold. And then I'm going to select the drop down and I'm going to be picking up the purchases. Just simply purchases, save and new. Let's do another one. We're going to yellowify that one, yellowify. And then we're at the dividend income. Now this one's going to be an other income on the, on the income statement in QuickBooks for our books, meaning it's not going to be on the top line of income, but on the bottom, because it's not top part of our normal operations. And then it's going to be called dividend income. And then down here, we're going to say, you could put this or think to put it to the other uh, income account, other income up top. And you can do that, but we're going to try to see if it could do a schedule K type of adjustment down here by putting it to the schedule k adjustment see if it does that for us we want the dividends so schedule k if we look at the tax return it's not going to be on page one of the uh 10 11 20 s but rather on page three is kind of an adjustment amount over here all right so that's going to be this item i'm, I'm going to then say save and close we'll set up a new one rise up and new this time we're going to go to the interest income so let's do the same for the interest income same situation it's going to be other income here so we're going to say other income continue and then this one we're going to we're going to call it interest income so we'll say interest income and you might think that it would go to other income here but rather we're going to put it to the schedule k type of adjustment down below which we're going to say schedule k for the interest i think this top one is the one that it should be even though it has those three dots and i can't see the whole thing so I'm going to say save and new. Let's do another one. We're on to the expenses now. So let's go ahead and, and yellowify this one. So we'll yellowify this. Now this account, we, we might need to add this account uh, in the future if we were to, to make adjustments to us. So I'll, I'll skip that for now because it doesn't have a number in it. Let's take a look at the compensation. So the compensation, if I close this out, they might have given us an account for like wages. So payroll expense, they call it. So you may just want to adjust the name on this one if you want to call it compensation by right clicking edit the account maybe we want to then call it compensation compensation it's not wages it's compensation 
And then we got it going to the wages and, and salaries and wages. So that looks good. Notice there's a difference between salaries and wages and that of the officer for an S corporation, which is important for an S corp. So we'll keep our eye on that and we'll have to make an adjustment typically for that. So then I'm going to say, let's save that one. Looks good. And then we'll, we'll yellowify it over here. So let's yellowify these two. These two are good. And then we're going to go to depreciation. So there's nothing in it right now. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and not record it at this time. We'll go back to it later. Bad debt expense. Bad debt. As opposed to the good debt. I'm not sure there is such a thing. Bad debt is a double, like you're repeating yourself. Anyway, so we're going to say this is going to be going to uh, an expense. So we're just going to call this an expense. And continue. And this is going to be bad debt. Bad debt. All right, and then this is going to be mapping to a uh, a deduction, and you would think it would be going. There it is. There's the deduction. So it couldn't find that one. That's okay. Cause and then we're going to say bad debt, and then save and new. And so we'll yellowify the bad debt miscellaneous now, our favorite expense. Just eh. oh no, that's meals. We're on meals now. It used to be meals and entertainment. But now, really, they kind of changed some of the rules for the meals. So be careful with meals and entertainment. In QuickBooks, they'll still call it meals and entertainment, typically. But uh, just be careful on what you put into meals and entertainment for the tax purposes. So meals. So meals. We're looking for meals and entertainment. So we'll pick that one up. That looks good. Let's go save and new. And we'll yellowify the meals. The next one is the maintenance. Maintenance. So let's copy that so I don't misspell it. So I'm going to say maintenance. And I'm not even going to spell it. And I'm going to just paste it there. And repairs and maintenance looks like the one we want there. So I'm going to say that's the one. Save and new. And let's yellowify maintenance. And then we've got business interest. So business interest. Which they may have like interest expense. Let's just call it, well, business in. Interest. I think it's just interest expense here. So interest expense. There we have that deduction. That looks good. So we'll say save and new. And we'll yellowify interest expense. Next we have property taxes. Taxes on property. And so we're going to say property taxes. Find that one. And see deductions like taxes and licenses. I think that would be. That they have usually down here. Other deduction for payroll taxes no so i think this is the one for state franchise or income tax i'm going with that one so let's see what that pulls over and so i'm going to say save and new save and new yellowifying that account yellowfy and then we're at the charitable contributions now this is something that typically again would be kind of an, an adjustment that would be made on a schedule k type of adjustment or something like that so so you could put it as a deduction but uh, we, we're going to need to make an adjustment typically for like a Schedule K type of adjustment. So you'd think it would be down here in some location. So I'm going to pick this one, Schedule K Charitable Contributions. And that one, again, you would think would pull over somehow to like page three and give give kind of adjustment that would be reconciling book and tax differences on the tax return. So that we'll keep an eye on that one. So we're going to say Save and New. And then... We'll yellowify that. Yellowify. And then we have office supplies. So I'm going to say, all right, office supplies. Office supplies. And so let's just type that in. Office uh, supplies. And let's find a, an account for that one. That one should be here. Some kind of supplies down here should be there. So we're going to put it into office expenses. So office expenses, save and new. And then I'm going to say, and the next one is rent. So we'll say rent. So yellow will find this one. We're going to go back on over and say, we're going to say save and new. And this one is going to be rent. Rent. And then we're going to make, uh, find the, the rent deduction. So there's that one. That looks good. So we'll say save and new. Next item uh, is advertising. So I'm going to yellowify this one. And we'll say advertising in QuickBooks. So back on over to QuickBooks, advertising, advertising, and then we'll select the drop down. We're looking for a deduction for advertising. So there it is. That one's there. Save and new. 
and yellowify this one so we'll yellowify that and the next one is legal services so legal and professional something like that so i'm gonna let's copy that copy that roger out legal services find the find the drop down so we got i think this would be like legal and professional or maybe just professional that they would have it on the taxes here here it is legal and professional i think that's the one save and new and then next we've got employee benefits so let's copy that one copy out copy it roger that paste it there and then we got the employee benefits so we got uh employee benefits employee benefits program let's just keep it at that one save and new and then we've got the telephone so telephone it's fairly straightforward so that's going to be telephone shouldn't copy that i could still misspell it so i'm going to copy it and then we're going to say this is going to be telephone do we have a telephone or possibly uh utilities i think they have a telephone broken out there we go telephone that looks good one more save and new and then we'll yellowify this one miscellaneous there's our favorite miscellaneous why can't we just put everything into miscellaneous that would make it easy so then we're going to just say miscellaneous and we'll see if we have a miscellaneous item on the deductions so we're going to scroll down and so we might have just other over here so i'm just going to put it into other so we put it into other uh deductions so then i'm going to say save and close so let's save and close that okay so i'm going to stop here we're going to continue next time to just enter our transactions so if i go to the trial balance we have our balance sheet in there we've got this opening balance we're going to have to take care of and now we're going to just basically do a journal entry to enter the income statement side next time and then we'll make an adjustment for our opening balances and see if we can line up to and match what we have here basically on our trial balance and then we'll take that data and practice exporting it to the tax software see what it looks like there see what kind of adjustments we would need to to make that exporting a useful tool within our practice